19. And we're going to pick it up in verse number 57. Psalm 119, verse number 57. The scriptures say this. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep thy words. I entreated thy favour with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. And... Uh, uh, we rejoice, but we're also sombre at the thought of Brother Ken not being with us anymore. And, and we're thankful that he is in the presence of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And pray, God, that you would comfort the family and help us as a church family to be a blessing to Tech and Esther and the family as well. Lord, we pray that you'd help us in the scriptures and teach us. We pray this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of the lesson this morning is this, I thought I'd take a time out. I thought I'd take a time out. As I was reading through this passage a while back, because I've got each section I've got titled, I got to verse number 59, and it's like he stops and has this time out, and he says, I thought on my ways. I thought on my ways. And of course, when you think about taking a time out in sport, for those of us who enjoy our sport, when a team takes a timeout, and you see it more often in, in, say, basketball, where a timeout is called, normally when a timeout is called, it's a time for that team to regroup and review the game plan and also to catch their breath a little bit. Uh, it's become popular, the term taking a timeout, it's become popular in child rearing. And I think made popular through the Super Nanny. Anyone remember that show, the Super Nanny? It was a Joe Frost. And uh, the whole thought of taking a time out there was to send that child to the naughty corner. And the child was to think about his or her actions and uh, then discuss with the child, um, you know, what's going to happen. So there's many different things that we could think about when it comes to taking a time out. And the psalmist here in verse number 55, 59 takes a time out to think about some things. And, uh, you know, as we were discussing with Tech there about Brother Ken, you know, this is a time for everybody to just take a time out and even think about a life. And I'm sure there are times, Brother John, in life where you take a time out and think about Pam. And it's important that we do things like that, that we just stop and we think. And we think about a person, we think about a life, uh, we think about even our own lives. So it is important for us as people to take a time out for us to regroup a little bit, to regather perhaps our thoughts, to readjust certain areas in our life and even to review our game plan and make sure that it coincides with what God's doing in our life. And uh, in life and ministry, life and ministry become, can become draining. And I want you to take your Bible and hold your place there in Psalm 119. And I want you to look at Mark chapter 6 for a minute and see what Jesus said to the disciples in Mark chapter 6. And if you would think of someone who is really busy in life and ministry, it would be the Lord Jesus Christ. Because multitudes were always thronging him. Always wanting to hear from him, always wanting to receive something from him. Or always perhaps just curious at who this man Jesus is. And he says to his disciples in Mark chapter 6 and verse number 
verse number 30. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And Jesus, he says unto them, come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat. So Jesus was saying to his disciples, he's saying, look, this, we're, we're really busy at the moment and we need to take a time out. We haven't even got so much leisure as to eat. And so Jesus said, let's, let's come apart for a little while. And someone once said this, we need to come apart before we come apart. And uh, we need to have holidays, we need to have rest breaks, we need to do all those sorts of things. And normally when we have those times in our life, it is to refresh, it's to regroup, it's to, to help in our life. And so even Jesus saw the importance of taking a time out and he shared that with his, uh, with his apostles. Now, don't forget in the Old Testament too, God set up the, the law of the Sabbath. And he said on the, on the sixth day, on, on, the, on the seventh day, sorry, on the seventh day you, you rest. Six days you work and on the seventh you rest. Now in the New Testament, we're not under the Old Testament law where we have to take a day off. But in principle, it's important to have a day off. It's important just to do nothing and relax. Can anyone do that? Can you sit around and just do nothing? You can do <laughs> You try and sit around. <laughs> but there's, without fail, when you sit around and want to do, do nothing, something comes up, oh, I've got to do this or I've got to do that. And, and, and we make sure we go and do that. It's very hard, isn't it, for us to just sit back and do nothing. I really struggle with it. Uh, I try and take Mondays as a rest day, but I'm always either downloading messages, uploading them to YouTube, um, you know, we look after, or well, Tracy looks after a little boy on Mondays. I try and help out, don't I, Tracy? Try and help out a little bit. I try. But it's very hard to, to actually find a day where you sit around and do nothing. Isn't that right, Zanita? It's very difficult, especially when up at two o'clock in the morning on Anzac Day and all that sort of business. But it's important that we make sure that we take a time out. So let's have a look at, uh, go back to Psalm 119. And I want to have a look just briefly this morning at some things that the psalmist said about taking a time out as he thought on his ways. And it's important for us in life just to sit back and think on our ways. All right. Now, I want you to notice something in verse number 50, not 59. He says this, he says, I thought on my ways and I turned my feet unto thy testimonies. So he took a time out to think about his life and to think about his ways. And then he says, I turned my feet. Now in the Bible, feet talk of a journey, feet talk of a direction, and feet talk about steps in life. And so the psalmist says, I've taken this time out, I've thought on my ways, and I've come to the conclusion that my feet, my direction, is not going in the same direction as God's testimonies. So it's important for us as Christians to take that time out, think on our ways and think, you know what, am I still going in God's direction? Am I still heading in God's ways? And so direction for us is very important in life and we need to think about where am I headed? Where am I headed in life? Am I headed in the same direction that God's going? Am I following God? Am I listening to God? Isn't it great, again, that you know, we, we think about direction as far as heaven we rejoice that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We rejoice that, that when, we, when we leave and depart this world, that we're going to go and be with the Lord in heaven and we'll catch up with uh, Ken and we'll see Pam and we'll see, uh, I'll see, we're talking about on the way to church, um, we're talking about uh, uh, mums, uh, Tracy's mum that went home, my grandfather, my brother-in-law, my mother, my grandmother. Uh, everyone's probably been touched uh, in their lives of someone passing away and I'm grateful that my direction that I'm headed in is to go and be with the Lord and see those that we love once again. That's a blessing to know that. But he thinks on his ways and he says, you know what, I fought on my ways and I turned my feet in the direction of God's testimonies. And the question I guess with that is what direction are you taking in life? What direction are you headed in? Psalm 119, folks, verse 57. We're looking at taking a time out. 
And so in verse number 59, he says, I thought on my ways and I turned my feet. So in other words, when he thought about his direction, he thought, you know what? I'm not headed in the same way that God is going and I need to change my direction. Do you know in the Bible, there's a Bible word called repentance. Very popular discussion at the moment amongst certain pastors in our movement. Repentance, what it is and what it isn't. I believe repentance is not just a change of mind, it's a change of direction. Uh, and so here what you would say was the psalmist thought on his ways and he repented. He, he changed his direction, his, his feet headed in the way of God's testimonies. All right. So direction is an important thing to think about, to take a time out and think, am I headed in God's direction? Number two, I want you to look at verse number 60. Verse number 60. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. So the first thing that he thought about was his direction. The second thing that he thinks about is his obedience. His obedience. You know, often in life it's important that when we sit back and we, we, we regroup and we, we readjust. There's, there's always things in our life that we need to readjust, isn't there? Uh, we do it every day. We use the analogy of driving in a car. We're always subconsciously doing little minute readjustments to make sure that the car's in the, in the right spot on the road and uh, making sure the bus, Brother John, is in the right spot. And the bigger the vehicle, you know, the, the more important you want to make sure you're in the, the right part of the road when you're driving, whether it's a bus or a truck or a car. But we're always making minor adjustments to our driving. And so it is in life that when we, when we take a time out and, and we need to think about our life, there's times where we need to readjust and think, you know, am I being as obedient to God as what I should be? Notice he says, I made haste. I made haste. It's important for us that when God says for us to do something, to do it quickly. Many of us like to sit back and we think, and we even argue with God a little bit, should I do this? You know, uh, in our household, sometimes when, the, as the kids were growing up, it's, and you ask them to do something, it's like, hang on a minute, hang on, hang on, I want to do this, hang on a second. But hang on, how many of us as parents, when we ask our kids to do something, we'd like it done quickly? Yeah. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> you want Gracie to be obedient quickly and make sure that when mum says to Gracie, I want you to do something, I want you to do it straight away. You know, God's no different. God is no different. The psalmist says, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy command. I didn't even delay. I didn't put it off. I didn't say, God, just hang on a second. Let me just think about that request for a minute. Let me just think about that commandment for a minute. No. He, he obeyed quickly. You know, Obedience is the medium for exchange. Obedience is the medium for exchange. You say, what do you mean by that? In the Bible, most promises are conditional. Would you agree with that? God says, I will do this as long as you do this. And so God, God, will, God, God is not obligated to do anything for us. But let me just say this, when we're obedient to his word, then he's obligated to fulfill his part of his agreement. So, for example, let's use tithing. We talked about tithing last Sunday morning. The Bible says for us to bring all the tithes to the storehouse and then they meet in one house. And God says that if you do that, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to contain it. We all know that verse. So where's, what, will God just pour out his blessing upon those who are disobedient? No. So if we're obedient in bringing our tithes to the storehouse, God will fulfill his part of the promise by pouring out or opening the windows of heaven and pouring out the blessing. How many of us want the blessing? We all want the blessings of God, but then are we obedient to God's word? We've got to think about that. And not make, make no delay. He says, I, I made haste, I delayed not. God's promises are conditional and he expects us to be obedient to him straight away. When you read something, how many of us in our devotions have read something in the Bible and the Spirit of God just illuminates it and speaks to your heart and it's something that you must do? How many of us need to understand that when he does that, we need to do it immediately? Do it immediately. The longer you delay... In being obedient to what God says, 
you're, you're probably prone to forgetting and not doing it. So when God says, I want you to do this, do it immediately. So he, he took a time out here. He thought on his ways. He changed his direction. And now he says, I need to be obedient to God quickly. I need to obey him quickly. Look at verse number 62. Verse number 62. He says, at midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. So when we think about um, taking a time out and thinking on our ways, the psalmist thought about his direction, thought about his obedience, and now he's thinking about his thankfulness, his thankfulness. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks. Now, if, uh, unless you're an older person that can't sleep, <laughs> midnight probably wouldn't be a hassle. Would it be? No dramas at all. No dramas at all. Why? Old people don't sleep. <laughs> Sorry. That's a bit of a general state. Brother John probably sleeps a couple of hours a night, don't you? You have a good sleep. He gives his beloved sleep, the Bible says. Um, but how many of us as younger people, younger, younger adults and teenagers, how many of us find it hard just to wake up at midnight, let alone to get up and give thanks to God? But the psalmist was thinking about this. He's taking a time out and he's thinking about his life. And, oh, okay, I better, I better change the direction I'm going in. I need to be more obedient and I need to be thankful. And when you think about midnight, when you think about midnight, to get up at midnight, to set your alarm and to get up at midnight, that to me speaks about the sacrifice in Thanksgiving. The sacrifice in Thanksgiving. You know, it's easy to be thankful when everything's going well, isn't it? Easy to be thankful. But there are times where we need to be thankful even when it's hard to give thanks. It's a sacrifice to say, thank you, Lord. Also, in the Bible, when you see the term midnight, more often than not, when you think about midnight, it's the midnight hour. It's a, it's a desperate time. It's a difficult time. And so therefore, God is saying to us, you know, we need to be thankful, not just in the good times, but in the difficult times. How many have struggled to give, thank, give God the thanks when we're struggling in life? Lord, thank you for this affliction. Lord, thank you for this difficulty that I'm experiencing. Lord, thank you for, you know, the lack of finances. Thank you for my health that's not going too well at the moment. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? It's a, it's a sacrifice to do that. But you know, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5... And verse number 18, it says, in everything, give thanks. In everything. Not, uh, we're to give thanks for everything, but the Bible says in everything. So when you're in a good spot, when you're in a good time, give thanks. When you're in a bad time in life, give thanks. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God. And so we need to be thankful and we need to be obedient to that verse immediately. When we think about taking a time out and thinking about our life. So the psalmist takes a time out and he thinks about his direction. He thinks about his obedience and he thinks about his thankfulness. You know, you, you'll always go far with a heart of gratitude. You know, we, isn't it interesting? How many has, have gone to places? And I think Australia, generally speaking, struggles in this that, you know, the hospitality industry. Now, Robert is involved in the hospitality industry, and he deals with some very prickly customers. But how often, uh, how often have we found that when we've gone somewhere that we've come across a uh, a waitress or a waiter or something, or even a bank teller, and they've just got a you know not very thankful, or they've got a bad attitude, or whatever it is. You know, we we come across people like that. I pray, and I'm sure, I'm sure there have been times in my life where I've not displayed the type of gratitude or thankfulness that is required of me as a Christian. But may we always remember to take a time out in life. You know, I think, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I think Saturday, what I like about Saturdays, there's some things I don't like about Saturdays. Saturdays for a pastor is a difficult day. But what I do like about Saturdays is I often take a time out, Friday and Saturdays actually, Friday I'll take a time out, I'll pray for our church folk, I ask God that, and, and, and I'll pray and ask and say, Lord, I hope the people are preparing their heart for church. 
you know, on a Sunday and things like that, and, and just going before God and, and just putting it out there and thanking God for the for the for the, my salvation, taking a time out and thanking Him for church and thanking Him that we've got a place to go, thanking Him for the bad times. You know, uh, when I got the text message from Tech, um, you know, half past one, I think I got it in the in the morning. I, I, I sat in my bed and I prayed for Tech and the family. If you don't know, text brother Ken went home to be with the Lord last night at quarter to twelve. Um, so, you know, there's times where we need to take that time out. And Saturdays is a good day, folks, to not get so busy, maybe in an afternoon, and just find somewhere quiet and just take a time out and readjust, regroup, reevaluate your life. How is my direction? How is my obedience going? How is my thankfulness? And the last thing that we look at here is found in verse number 63. He says this, he says, I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. So he took a time out and he thought about his companions and who he was a companion with. He says, I'm a companion of those that fear thee. And, you know, sometimes it's important to think of our life and say, you know, I want to have a look at my circle of friends because friends influence, don't they? And it's important that we think about that because I want to be around friends or companions that influence me for good. Now, he says, I'm a companion of all them that fear thee. So he had good godly companionship. Because a good companion will encourage you in the things of the Lord. A bad companion will discourage you away from the things of the Lord. So it's important that we think about the people that you hang out with. Because the people that you hang out with are going to influence you. And if those people fear God and love God, then they're going to influence you for good. But if those people don't fear God and love God, then the influence is not going to be for good. Does that make sense? That's very simple, but it's true, isn't it? Now, I want to say this. I was thinking about this, and the Spirit of God just spoke to my heart, and I was thinking about companionship. I'd like to say this. In the Bible, ladies, um, the Bible says that our wives are a companion. All right? Our wives are companions. So I encourage the ladies here that have, that have husbands that you encourage your men in the things of the Lord. Encourage them. Don't, don't discourage them. All right? I was thinking about that, and maybe that's for someone this morning. I don't know. But our ladies, our wives, are, are our companions. You, you, you know, you're, you're John's companion. Tracy's my companion. Esther, your text companion. And, and Dana, you're even in James's companion. Uh, and it's important that our companions, or I'm a companion of those, and I have companions that encourage me all right, in the things of the Lord and not discourage me from the things of the Lord. And it's important for us as companions together in, in, in the Christian life to encourage one another. But I pray and, and ask that you would be a special encouragement to Tech and Esther today and, and be praying for them as a family as well. So from time to time, it's important that you all take a time out. How many of us are busy? How many would say, I'm, I'm really, really busy? busy? You know, the busier you are, the more important it is to take a time out and think about life. To think about where you're going. Like he said, my direction, I changed my steps. To think about your obedience. To think about your thankfulness. And then to think about your companions. All right, so it's important to think about that. So take a time out. Jesus said, come apart and rest a while. And it's important that we do that in the Christian life because the Christian life can be draining, can't it? Life in general can be draining. And we need to take that time out. All right, let's have a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for this morning. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just bless the lesson to our heart. And I pray that you would encourage us with it. And also pray now, God, that you'll bless our fellowship time and the food we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.